Welcome to Education Forum. I'm Herman Badillo, Chairman of the Board of Trustees of the City University. The improvement of education affects all New Yorkers. This program will focus on the key educational issues and challenges before us all. My guest today is Eduardo Marti, who has been selected by us at the Board of Trustees as the new president of Queensborough Community College. Mr. Marti was born in Havana, Cuba, and he came to the United States in 1960 at the age of 19. He studied at NYU where he got his bachelor's, master's degree, and his PhD. And then he taught for a while at Borough Manhattan Community College and became a dean at uh, BMCC and went to uh, other universities throughout the country. And he comes to us uh, from uh, Corning Community College where he has been the president of Corning Community College since 1994. Welcome not just to the program, but uh, welcome to CUNY and to New York City. We're glad to have you back. Thank you, Chairman Madillo. It's a pleasure to be here. Thank you. Tell us, uh, <coughs> when you came here at the age of 19 from Cuba, mm -hmm. were you able to speak English fluently? Because you hardly have an accent. Well, yes, I had a, uh, I went to a bilingual uh, elementary school in, in Cuba. Cuba. Uh -huh. and, uh, and then uh, to a, uh, a senior a senior high school that was uh, all in Spanish. So by the time I came here, I had some background. But I did the ESL mm -hmm. in, at NYU, and uh, I, um, I I struggled through uh, all of that reading. Uh, so I'm I'm very much um, familiar with the, uh, the the difficulties that people who have other languages have in studying, memorizing, assimilating, and analyzing information that is in English. Well, you need those skills at Queensboro Community College because uh, a very large percentage of the students come from, uh, are immigrants from countries from all over the world, not just from Latin America, but from uh, Asia and Africa. And uh, it's, uh, it's precisely the kind of... Uh, of uh, experience that you and I went through when we came to the United States. Well, that's precisely what it, what uh, attracted me to Queensboro. I, I uh, when I got the call, uh, it was a Sunday night at 9:30 at night, um, saying to see if I was interested in applying for this, and um, I, I was pretty happy at Corning. Uh, and uh, uh, the idea of of helping immigrants was really the the variable that caused me to apply, and I'm very delighted that I did. See, the biggest problem we had, I know I had it, maybe you did too, is that uh, because we come here and we have difficulty with the language, uh, we don't get uh, proper counseling. And I know that I was uh, shunted off to airplane mechanics, and if I had followed that course, I would be out of a job now because those were internal combustion engines, which nobody uses. But one of the things that uh, new immigrants need the most is someone who will orient them and who will uh, help to uh, ensure that uh, they stay in, uh, in school and that they graduate. And the community colleges, to me, are the key source of uh, providing information to immigrants. Um, and that's why, that's why I welcome you to this system, because most people really don't understand uh, what a community college does. Could you explain that to our audience? Well, the community college does three things. Uh, it prepares students for the baccalaureate uh, education, uh, and those are the first two years of the baccalaureate education. Uh, it also prepares students for the world of work, uh, if they want to go in that, in that route with the AAS, or the Associates in Applied Science. And also, it provides training for workers in the community who want to have a non-credit type of experience that would put them right into work, hopefully with the idea that eventually they'll come back to the college and, and get a degree, which is obviously the most important thing. What uh, what courses are available at Queensboro? They are they range the variety. Uh, Queensboro is a comprehensive community college that is, emphasizes from liberal arts uh, to uh, voc tech, uh, things like the technologies, the photonics, the laser technology. Uh, it's it's a college that is has always been known as being a state of the market, if not state of the art. We'll make it state of the art. One of the biggest problems we've had, not just at Queensboro, but at all the community colleges in uh, the city university, and one uh, which the mayor has been very critical of, and so have I, is the fact that we have such a very low percentage of students who are graduating from the colleges. And um, I think in 
Obviously, nobody expects them to graduate in, in two years, although they're two-year colleges. But over a period of years, the graduation rate is very low. What was your experience at Corning? Well, it's similar, but, but I, I like to, uh, to delve into, a little bit into that. But before I do that, let, let me start out by saying that, that I consider that there's no worse insult than false praise. And as a minority, uh, as an ethnic minority, when somebody gives me something that I have not earned, they are insulting me. So I, I strongly believe in standards. I strongly believe in making certain that uh, people like me uh, are able to rise to the level that they can and, and give them the tools. But work they must, prove themselves they must. Now, going to the community colleges, um, if we had, if Corning Community College, where I now serve as a president, was a selective admission college, we would uh, uh, accept only 17% of our entering class because our entering class uh, graduates in two years and 17% of, 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 of the class graduates in two years. If you go another year, which when you factor in remediation, you are now graduating 40% of the class. If you go another year when you factor in those individuals that needed intensive remediation, now you go into 55, 60% of graduation. Well, that's, that's well beyond what we have in well, terms of graduates, not just at the community colleges, but even at the senior colleges. Because the problem that we have in New York City is that because of uh, open enrollment, mm -hmm. anybody who uh, has a high school diploma can go to a community college. And in fact, we have a situation where up to 77% uh, or more of the students who come in to the community colleges cannot pass one of the three tests in uh, reading, uh, mm -hmm. writing, English, or arithmetic. So that means that's because of the question of social promotion in the high school. So that means that just about everybody has to get some kind of remediation. Well, I think that's, that's the issue. The, the, uh, at Corning, we have about 80% of our students are, uh, need to take remedial courses. But the, the emphasis of good quality pedagogy in the remedial courses is absolutely important. The, the, the idea of not allowing somebody who has a deficiency to get into a college level course uh, is, is where you have the quality. Uh, That's where we've had the problem, that we've had students right. who have been taking remedial education in order to get them ready for college work, and right. at the same time, college work for which they were not ready, which to me has never made any sense. Well, if, I, if you put me, I, ha I hold a PhD in biology and biochemistry, if you put me right now in a calculus class, I probably will flunk it, because I've been out of the lab since 1972. If I went to Corning Community College or if I went to Queensborough Community College and I placed in mathematics, I probably would place in remedial. I need a little boost. But other individuals have a fourth grade level, and those individuals need a major bo boost. Uh, in addition to the educational deficiencies, uh, there are areas that we need to address, and that is the c uh, culturization to the college environment. Uh, people who are... Uh, immigrants are, first of all, shell-shocked. They're in a different culture altogether. Now they're put into a competitive environment in a college setting. They need some help. They need some support services. Um, and I intend to address that at Queensboro. I intend to be able to, to put together some systems within the structure to assist those students, to, to make certain that they are able to contact advisors, and that they are able to contact faculty. Yes, counselors. The, the students have told me that they need um, one of the deficiencies they find in the community colleges is there are not enough counselors because mm -hmm. they need people who will advise them. And the other problem is that there's a huge percentage of adjunct faculty yeah. instead of tenured faculty, and the adjunct faculty, because they're only working part-time, leave immediately after they give their courses and are not available for providing assistance to the students. This happened uh, because of the fiscal crisis in the City University 19, in the 1970s, but we have never been able to catch up up to now. And I must say that uh, I find the governor and the mayor to be very sympathetic and we're getting some additional support in this year's budget to get some more uh, faculty permanent yes. faculty, yeah. but it's still going to be a problem for quite a while, so that puts an additional burden on, on you as a But it has to be an institutional priority, president. Mr. Chairman. It has yeah. to be an institutional yeah. priority. You, 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 if, 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 you, if you adjunct faculty is excellent to bring the state of the market, state of the art, if you will, uh, knowledge to, uh, to, the, uh, to the community college base, 
but you need that core faculty. You need that faculty member that looks at the students in the eye and say, and sees them in the cafeteria, or sees them in a basketball game, or sees them in the pool, and, and, and talks with that individual. There's more instruction that takes place outside of the classroom. Sometimes it, it happens in the classroom. Adjunct faculty doesn't have the time to do that. And you have to counsel them, too, because the students, uh, yeah. especially the, the new immigrants, uh, right. don't know what, uh, what the opportunities are that are available. Yeah. I, I was very impressed with the, um, the, the Queensboro uh, positioning, if you will, the, the institutional positioning versus immigrants. I, I think that, that they are ready to take on the challenge of helping out and reaching out at that population and, and, and improving the graduation rate, improving the, 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 the ability of those students to be able to complete a baccalaureate because that's really the ultimate goal. Yeah, and I think the, the problem is that I find that there's too casual an attitude about the time it takes the students to graduate. Now, I understand the problem because I worked full time when I was going to City College, and it's not easy to work full time and go to college full time, but I was determined that I was going to get my education out of the way mm -hmm. by the time I was 25. And by, even though I couldn't speak English when I was 12, by the time I was 25, I was a lawyer and a certified public accountant. But I find that there are too many of the faculty who are saying to students, because you are poor, because you have to work, take your time. And what happens is that uh, if they're in their 30s or so and they haven't finished, they tend to drop out because they get married and have a family. So well, my view is, even if you have to go without sleep, you should finish your education as fast as possible. But remember those days. Uh, remember that the, only, the most precious, com precious commodity that we had the most valuable possession we had was time, and we needed to do it quickly. Uh, and, and I go back to false praise. What you just said, to, to have the, the cavalier attitude towards a student because they can't do it. Mm -hmm. Look at what Mr. Escalante did in, Cal in California. I mean, all you have to do is raise that bar and say, you can do it, and, and, and then hold them to it. And they will do it. Yeah, okay. Absolutely. We'll be back after these announcements. There may be some things this little girl won't do as well as other children. But this won't be one of them. Not if Sven Anderson has anything to do with it. Because for years he's been helping children like this to build their lives. The world needs a lot of Sven Andersons. Couldn't you be one of them? It's not your money. It's you we want. Just You're only a phone call away. A kid What if you had to choose between a flower and an elephant? What would you choose? What if you had to decide between a hundred-year-old tree and a million-year-old beach? Could you choose between drinking clean water or breathing clean air? Now you can choose all these things. Earthshare, the world's leading environmental groups working together. It's one choice we can all live with. We're back today with Eduardo Martí, the new president of Queensboro Community College of the City University. I felt uh, when I became chairman that we were not paying enough attention to the community colleges at the City University. So I set up for the first time a, a committee of trustees on community colleges so that we could uh, give greater attention to the community colleges and. Uh, we wanted you to be uh, the president of Queensboro because uh, my feeling is that um, there's been for too long an attitude that community colleges are not real colleges, and I don't uh, think that we are servicing our students if we continue with that attitude. Well, I'm delighted about this. I, 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 serve as, I currently serve as the president of the Association of Presidents for Community Colleges for the state of New York. Oh, great. So I represent right. CUNY as well as SUNY. And I was uh, very much uh, in the mix when the SUNY Board of Trustees was creating a, com a, 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 com a committee in community colleges. I am delighted that the City University has, has a committee in community colleges. I suspect it's going to be a little bit different. I, I suspect that we're going to have a, a greater emphasis on the articulation with baccalaureate granting institutions and CUNY than you have in SUNY. So it will be a different committee, but I'm delighted that you're doing this. The articulation then means the question of uh, having students at the community colleges 
uh, going on to the senior colleges. That's and that's right. been a big problem because some of the uh, senior college presidents have told me privately, they won't say it publicly, but they have said privately that they have found in the past that the students who got a diploma from the community colleges still needed remediation. And for that reason, they were not willing to take them to the point where there's some students who have told me that it's easier to go from a community college to another university than it is to go to the city university. So uh, we have to uh, work out uh, procedures to deal with the, this so-called articulation problem. Well, and I think that the way, the, one of the ways to do this is, is, is the, the, by the way, the reason that, that private institutions are more receptive to accept students from community colleges than perhaps public institutions is because they don't know the students as well as the ones in the public institutions. The, there, is a, there is a grain of truth in what is being said in terms of the level of preparation and level of understanding of the rigor of the curriculum at the community college by the fa faculty of the baccalaureate granting institution. I think that if we talk to one another, if we're able to have department to department, talk to one another, faculty to faculty, I tell you, I can stack the faculty at Queensboro with the faculty of any other, uh, other, any other college in, in City University, well, uh, and they'll be able to talk to one another. It would seem to me that the, co the, the, the curriculum and the courses should be the same. If you take English literature at a community college and you take it at a senior college, it should be the same thing. Should be so, the same. But apparently, the feeling has grown up that it's not the same thing, so that therefore a, uh, a, a two-year liberal arts course at a community college is not given the same uh, full faith and credit at the senior colleges. And from my point of view and my colleagues in the Board of Trustees, that has got to stop, and we have to make it compatible. It's a huge problem, because I think it has to do with the, with the fact that if you don't have a good, strong, professional uh, approach at the remedial issue, you will not be able to have the quality that is required in the community college, college level courses, in that English course you're talking about. So the faculty member in that course has one of two options, either flunked out 84% of their class or pass it. And by, by God, they shouldn't be passing it. But let's face it, the temptation is always there to be kind, to be gentle. I mean, as teachers, we're all nurturers. We try mm -hmm. to encourage the, the student. So it, it can happen, and over time, that can lower the standards. And, and I think that we, the time has come. The, one of the reasons that I'm joining this team is because of you, Chairman Badiou, because of the Chancellor. I know that you are trying to create, bring some semblance of, of uh, not semblance, uh, some, some level of rigor to the curriculum in the city university. And the key is I want to be part of it. And the key, as you said, is the question of remediation. Because yeah. we have to get over that hump, it seems to me, before we do anything else. And I find that that's one of the areas where we have failed the most in the past. How do we make the uh, remediation courses uh, more uh, rigorous and more successful? Well, I, 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 I wince when you said fail because I, I, I hesitate to use the word fail. I, I think we have tackled a problem that was very massive and we've done the best we could under the funding situations that we had in the C University. I think the approach of going to the, se to the secondary sector to start talking in the ninth grade Right. To, start, to start testing the college now program. To start testing the students in the sophomore year, making certain we have some remedial articulation with the secondary sector, and then putting the best teachers that we can in the remedial courses, making certain that, that those individuals uh, are able to be experts in pedagogy. I say that the main discipline at the community college is pedagogy. I happen to be a biologist. I'm very proud of the fact that I, I, I hold a, a, a strong PhD in, in a strong science. But when I'm in that community college, I'm a teacher first. And my discipline in that institution is pedagogy. And the way that I translate knowledge rather than create knowledge is, is where my forte is at. And I expect the faculty to be able to do that. I expect the faculty to be able to be the best in the world in terms of teaching. See, I met with uh, many students, especially, for example, at uh, Borough Manhattan Community College, where you taught, uh, who have told me that freshman students, they're very upset because they discovered when they got to BMCC that they had to take a lot of remedial courses. And they thought they had a real high school diploma. Yeah. And they thought that they could go to a community college and graduate in two years. But then they find they have to take remedial course after remedial course. And that is the most discouraging 
and disappointing thing to get the moment you hit the community colleges because then mm -hmm. it looks like you're going to have to keep going to school forever. Well, that's what I mean about false praise is the worst, worst insult. But, but to, to be able to have a high school diploma, to come to a testing site at a community college and not be able to go right into a curriculum, a college level curriculum, uh, that, that's, that's, uh, uh, that's borders on, on, on something that should not be done. I, I don't want to use the word. When I um, decided to set up the committee in community colleges, I talked to Ed Cox of mm -hmm. the um, State University, who's co-chairman of the community college uh, um, committee there, and he told me that there is some kind of institution at Cornell that provides training for people in community colleges. I understand that you're on the board of that group. I am. You want to tell us something about it? Yes, it has three functions. Uh, the development of uh, leadership for community college administration in the state, uh, the uh, development of faculty, uh, faculty development, and research for community colleges, community college issues. Um, I believe that this is something that will grow and I, th and I am delighted that the CUNY and SUNY are talking and joining forces together. I think that this can be a mecca, uh, if you will, for community college education in the Northeast. So if we have the people from our community colleges going to Cornell, what, what, would, they, uh, what, what would be involved in Well, let's assume that you have an associate dean of liberal arts okay. at Borough of Manhattan Community College right. that, that has aspirations to become a dean. Uh, well, there, there will be um, uh, workshops at at, uh, at Cornell that will be selective to begin with, you know, to get into, but uh, it will be intensive, uh, one week, two weeks, three weeks, four week workshops that will train that individual to become a, an efficient administrator. The same thing for presidents, especially, for example, presidents that are coming into the system uh, to, to see how the New York system operates. Uh, the, the only c caution that I have about the Institute right now is that it started with SUNY, and, and I see it as my responsibility as the president of the APPCC to make it that it's a New York State Institute, mm -hmm. not just a SUNY Institute. I, mean, I, I, I think it's going to be wonderful. Well, that's why I want to get the CUNY uh, community colleges involved, because uh, right. if it's going to be a New York State Institute, yeah. uh, the city universities cer certainly participate. Right, absolutely. And, and I think it's going to be, the participation is going to be, I mean, I have, te I, I have attended two uh, workshops already there at, uh, for presidents. And, and that's another thing. You know, sometimes when, you, when people think that you become a president, they, they, they assume that because you're a president, you have re reached the, the highest level of your professional. Well, you still have to learn. We always have to learn. So uh, to get together with fellow presidents and, and, and to, to be challenged uh, uh, by, by uh, world-class faculty, uh, it's, it's very beneficial for all of us. Now, what can we do to encourage more of the young people to stay in high school and go on to college? Because especially in the Hispanic community, <coughs> we have a, <coughs> a very high percentage of students who drop out of high school. And if they don't drop out of high school, then they drop out of the community colleges. And we have to somehow emphasize to them and to their parents the uh, increasing importance of education today. How do we reach the parents, for well, example? I think we need to make certain that, that the parents and the students understand that there's a light at the end of the tunnel, there's another train coming at them, that, that, they, that they can, if they do certain things, they can have a better life. Again, I go to false praise. If you go through a baccalaureate, if you go to a community college, get your associate's degree, you go to a baccalaureate granting institution, you get your bachelor's degree, and you end up flipping hamburgers in a McDonald's, uh, it, it, you wasted that time. What is important is that they understand that they, they should be uh, a, I created a transfer and career office at Corning Community College. I gave, I got a lot of flack for it. Why are you doing this? The faculty is the one who advises and all that. I said, look, we're producing a product. The product is a student. The student is either going to transfer or get a job. The way I'm going to be measured is by how many students transfer, how many students get a job. I'm creating an office that does that. And, 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 and that, I think And that why was the experience you had? Well, oh, the experience is good. The experience is excellent. I mean, as a matter of fact, we, we, we sort of t been touted as a little model for, I mean, Corning is a tiny little place. but tell it as a model, people come to see it, how it operates, because it, it has, it, it operates as a um, uh, employment agency. 
you know, you have the, the resumes, you have the jobs, we have follow-up, we, we, we guarantee the fact that if a student goes to a particular job, he's going to be there at least six months. And yeah, we never had had a follow-up. That's one of the things I want to find out. What is happening if the student does not go on to get a four-year degree, goes on to a career, does he in fact get a job and does he stay there? And, 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 and that's where the light is uh, at the end of the tunnel. If the students begin to understand that the, if they come to the city university and they spend four years, six years, whatever it takes to get a baccalaureate degree, and at the end of that experience, they get a good job, they get a better life, that's going to motivate the ones that are still in high school to follow suit. Uh, I, I think, uh, and I think we need to talk to the parents. We need to tell the parents, look, this is what can happen to you. And, and instead of us providing opportunities for students and letting them rise to the top and select the best and the brightest, I think we need to reach out and we need to make certain that we bring them with us and say, you can do it. That's the goal, and thank you for being with us today. Bless you, sir. You can reach us by email at our website, www.cunytv.cuny.edu, or write to us at CUNY TV, 365 Fifth Avenue, New York, New York, 10016. We look forward to hearing from you.